React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, and it is everywhere. You'll see it used on your favorite social media platform like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, for example. You'll also see it used on content delivery platforms like Netflix and Spotify. And you'll also see it in developer tools like React Native, Gatsby, and XJS. In this course, we're going to focus on the fundamentals of React.js, so you can jump into working on your own React projects right away. Hi, my name is Syed, and I'll be the instructor for this course. I've been in the training industry for a little over 20 years, and I've trained thousands and thousands of students. I've developed courses in Python, Java, React.js, JavaScript, and so on. As an IT enterprise architect, I exactly know what skill set is required by these enterprise organizations. Let me walk you through the course agenda. So we'll start off by taking a look at the basics of what React is, how to get started with React, how to install the tools that are required, and then we'll dive deeper into React elements, and we'll create an element. I'll show you how to render multiple React elements, and also introduce JSX, which is an important concept within React. Moving further, we'll get into React components, understanding properties and how to use props, adding keys, rendering lists, and of course, using the if loops as well. And of course, more importantly, we'll also dive deeper into React hooks, understanding array destructuring, using the use state and multiple state variables. And finally, we'll also learn how to fetch data from GitHub or other APIs using React hooks. So, I really like React a lot. So, who's this course for? If you are already working within JavaScript or you have some understanding of object-oriented programming, this is the right course for you. We regularly update our courses, so every single time we publish a course, we also provide regular updates so you keep up with the latest technology and the latest improvements. So what are you waiting for? If you need to become a React developer and gain solid understanding, click on the enroll button now and I'll see you in class. So once you start with the npm-v, which just tells you about the version, and then of course the command, uh, the npx create-react-app, and then the name of the project, which is hello-react. Then I also use a flag called use npm, so I wanna make sure that it uses the npm to do all the installation. And once you hit the enter key, of course, it's gonna start creating a new React app within the folder called C hello dash react it's going to install all the packages and of course this may take a couple of minutes you know installing react so this may take a you know of course a couple of minutes because it's going to install the react it's going to install the react dom it's going to you know install the react scripts and of course all the templates as well so we'll let it rip give it some time before the installation is complete all right, so everything is installed. And next, what we need to do, of course, you can go through all of this if you need to. It finds all of the details, and of course, the installation is complete. So we can now you know, type npm start, but before we do that, let's switch to our uh, directory, which is cd hello react, right? That's what we need to do. It kind of tells you the suggestion also that you can begin by typing cd hello react so this will lead us to the actual folder that we'll be working on so let me go ahead and clear the screen so now that you're in the hello dash react folder we can then click or type npm start and this is going to start our react app and that's all there is to it right so it just starts the uh, react app it just gives you the of course the warning just click on allow access to of course public or if you want to allow access to private networks such as your home you could also do that and just click on allow access and this is going to go ahead and open up the local host and you have a react app that's really there's to it so and of course we'll be changing the code let's go back to our VS code and you can see that it compiled successfully the local host is at localhost at port 3000 and on your network of course it gives you the url as well note that the development build is not optimized to create the production build use npm run build and we'll be working with this as we move forward but 
there you go this is your first react app and that's really what this is all about so let's move on to our next lesson and let's take a look at and how to open up our actual folder right so we know that we did create hello dash react folder on our c drive so all i need to do is just navigate to c drive and you'll navigate to hello dash react or whichever name you provided that's fine as well and once you have it just go to the source folder and you can explore other folders as well for example the public or the node modules right so all these are part of the actual hello react app and you can now open the folder so once you select the folder hello react simply click on select folder and this is going to go ahead and open the folder for you with all of the files within that particular project it just gives you a little message you trust the authors of the files of this folders and you can simply say trust you know check the box if you do get this message and say I trust the authors and there you go so now you have all of the folders as well as dependencies within this so what you're looking for here is the app.js and that's your react app and now and start working with of course and begin to code and develop your react application as you move forward and you will also notice that this particular code is very similar to what you have on the site so it says edit src app.js and save to reload so if i just minimize this and of course go back to my code here's the text right so what you need to do is just simply you know edit the code add some more text and of course you can also incorporate html css and we'll be working as we move forward so just to give you an example i can say something like welcome to play desk and of course do the control save go back to my page and just hit reload so once i made the changes of course i can simply navigate and open up this in the browser and it will reflect of course the uh, page as well so that's all there is to it so hope this helps if you have any questions post in the discussion area and with this let's move to the next lesson welcome back everybody so we have finally set up our first react project and we have the app.js file and of course this is where you can see all of the code that you have so far now the beauty of react and of course is that if i change anything within the code or if i add a few lines of code it will just show me right here on my browser so for example if i say something like welcome to our react app so as soon as i type something and do Control s save you'll notice that within your browser you'll have it you know instantly reflect it within your browser so that's really the power of react moving forward as we develop more so make sure go ahead you set this all up if you have any questions post in the discussion area and then with this let's move to the next lesson and then we'll begin with our project and we'll take the project to the next level welcome back everybody so create react app exists just to make the process of setting up the react application easier right so gives you the project structure that means you have a folder of files on you know with different you know files right so for example you have the package json file right and this is where all the dependencies are so for example you have the libraries for testing you have everything that you need to work with the react library right so you have the react dom for example to render your react on browser and then you have react scripts which helps us bundle and serve the code so the source folder contains all of the files right that you need to write the application so you can of course change and go back to app.js and just you know learn react easily as soon as you do this you do control s save and boom it shows right here on your browser right so you'll have all of the files within this folder here but just uh, going back to of course the uh, package.json file right this is the dependencies and then like i mentioned earlier this is all in json format so you may not be using it 
while building your application, but it's good to know where all these uh, dependencies exist. So if something was to happen, you can always go back and change it. All right, so that's really a quick tour of your React app. And then we have the app.js file. You also have other files like index.css, which is your um, cascading style sheets. And of course, you have the index.js file as well. And this is really all the files that you need to start with the project, okay? You also have logo. You also have the readme file uh, as well. So hope this helps. Just basically just a quick tour of the React app. So let's move on to the next lesson and continue forward building our app. Welcome back. So moving forward, the next step is to install the React developer tools. And you can use the Chrome extension if you're using a Chrome browser or if you're on a Mac, that's fine too. It doesn't matter which browser, just search for React developer tools and you'll be navigated to, or you'll be presented with all these links. So just click on React Dev Tools, and what this will do is allow you to add the Chrome extension. Now, once the extension is installed, you can go through and just kind of go through the overview of this. What this does is adds React debugging tools to the Chrome Dev Tools, right? And this is going to be a lifesaver once we start building our applications as we move forward. So just go ahead, let me make this bigger and click on add to Chrome. And this is going to give you a little pop-up. It just says add extension and the extension will automatically be installed. And you'll see on the top right here, it says React Developer Tools has been added to Chrome among all the other extensions that you have, if any. You can always remove the extension later on by going to settings and then remove the extension. But this is very, very handy. So go ahead, quickly install the uh, React developer tools so that you have once you're done with this. So once you have uh, the developer tools installed, just do a Control, Shift, and J if you're using Windows, and it will open up uh, the dev tools for you. On the top here, you can explore the elements, the console, sources, network, and then click on these two arrows and gives me additional options such as performance, memory, application, security, and lighthouse. There are certain gear icon. You can also click on that and set your own preferences. And there's a whole, you know, you can, you can set it up based on your own developer requirements. So a couple of more things I want to quickly show you here. If you click on the three ellipses, you'll notice there are some more tools that you can also set those up like animations, changes, coverage, developer resources, issues, and so on. You can also set up shortcuts, for example, or you can go to help and take a look at the documentation as well. So there are many, many ways you can set up the dev tools. And as we move forward, I'll be, of course, giving you some of the important areas and how to uh, set this up so that it's more productive for you. So I hope this helps. Go ahead, install the dev tools. And with this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back, everybody. So with our environment set up, let's start writing some code. First, we'll remove some lines from our index.js. So you want to get rid of, for example, this comment here. I'm going to delete that. And we're not going to worry about that at this moment. We're also going to go ahead and remove the import app and the import from the line five and six, right? So get rid of that. And then remove some of these extra lines. And then react-dom.render takes two arguments, right? So the first arguments, I'm gonna get rid of this too. And then the second is where you want to render the elements. So I'm gonna use the react.create element, and that's the function that will be used to build this element, right? So that we can render it on the page. Now, it takes in three arguments. The first is the name of the tag that you want to do. For example, let's do an H1. And second is any properties. So for now, we'll just pass in null. And then the third is any children. So this could be another tag or it's just simply text, right? So once you save this file, you're going to see 
hello being rendered, right? So let's do a control S, refresh, and boom, there you go. So it says hello clay desk, right? Now, if you were to ins inspect the element and see what's going on, I can just right click and click on inspect. And this will give me all the details as to what is going on. So for example, if I expand the body here, you'll notice the div ID is root. And where this is coming from is, of course, from our public folder on the left here. And I'll, I'll get back to that a little bit later as to show you where this root is. But for now, just expand the head and you'll see all of the details that you're looking for. Now, if I expand the div ID root, you'll notice it says hello playdesk. And that's a heading one. Now, of course, this is a how you would create up ending, uh, creating the React elements. So now, of course, you're rendering it to the root element. Now, where is that root? Like I mentioned earlier, you'll find it in the public folder. And here's the index file. And you'll see an empty div with an ID of root. And this is where it is, right? So your React application just needs H1 is going to be injected into that div. So remember, you can use the react.create element functions. You can create any sorts of functions. For example, an H2 will render an H, you know, heading two. So it just depends on how you want to set this up, right? So if you wanted to apply properties to this element, for example, you can pass in an object. So you could give it a style. So instead of say null, you could do, for example, style. And this is going to go ahead and, of course, give it a color red. And these are just simple uh, syntax that you can also take a look at. So, for example, if I were to do, let's say, color, and I want to do red. Perfect. Now, this is going to go ahead and, of course, do the color red for this particular style. So, if I do control save and refresh, there you go. So now, hello, clay desk is in red. So again, you can pass in any of these properties and then you can play with it. If you want to change it to the color blue, for example, for that matter, just save and it will just change the color blue. And on the bottom here, you'll notice the div tags also change the color instantly, right? Based on your code. So you can create these elements in React as you move forward, right? So, and again, this is going to be added to that H1 or H2 when it's rendered to the root, right? So you can change to any color. You can, you know, try practicing with green or other elements. So React elements are the building blocks of the application. And of course, in the next lesson, I'm gonna be showing you how we can bring this together to create more complex user interfaces. So I hope this helps practice with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back, super excited. So in the last um, video, I demonstrated how to simply use the react.create element. And then we also looked at uh, various uh, attributes, right? So H2 color, um, or of course the child uh, as well but let's move forward and see what we can do as far as and when we did render it with the dom right so it's also possible to render multiple elements using create element calls and, and you know making some adjustments to the third element the children right so you can think of this value as what you want this value to render so for example instead of h2 you can do a div and this will be a parent container right and you could just display hello or you can embed another a child element like react.create element h1 and i could do that by simply getting rid of the hello uh, clay desk right here that you see and then of course i can also do something like a react dot element right so i could in fact do that or react.create element rather there we go perfect so once i create you know react.create element i could then of course within the curly braces or within the parentheses i could do a heading one for example right start using my tags and then of course 
do the same thing. Do a null for the next one. And then you get the idea, right? So what I'm doing here is embedding basically the child within the React DOM, right? So, and of course you can take a look at this by navigating to the developer tools and that's your homework. So go check it out and see what happens because it creates a div container, right? And then it will allow you to easily identify how things work within React. Now this could get complex. So in the next video, I'm gonna give you a simpler syntax, right? And that's really where the JSX comes into play. And then we can take a look at that and see what that does and what that means, okay? So by changing, go practice with this a couple of times. And then of course, let's see if I can do a null value. And then after null, I could do, let's say, something like hello or hi, right? Now, if I save this, and of course, it gives me a little bit of error here. And of course, I need another set of parentheses. Perfect. And this is going to get rid of the error. So let's go ahead and save and compile successfully. And all I need to do is just, of course, um, run the build again. And I already have it here. Just refresh and it will just say hi, right? Perfect. So that's really what this is all about. You'll notice that this is an you know, embedding a child within the React create element. And you can, of course, and you can see that things get complex, right, uh, moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and of course, show you an easier way where you can use the same syntax, but in an easier simplified manner, okay? All right, so go ahead and practice with this. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back, super excited. Moving forward, we're gonna talk about JSX and why is it important and what is JSX and of course, how do we use it in React, right? So let's begin by taking a look at this variable declaration. So you'll notice that it's kind of like funny, right? Because the tag or the syntax is neither a programming language nor is HTML. So it's just like a mixture of the two, right? So it's not string nor HTML because if you look at it, it says, uh, you know, const element equals, and then of course there's heading one tag, it says hello world. And then of course we close the tag for H1. Now this is actually called JSX and it is a syntax extension to JavaScript. So if you're comfortable with JavaScript a little bit, then you would know that uh, JSX is basically just a syntax extension, right? And of course, we use it in React to describe what the UI should look like, right? The user interface. And JSX, by the way, it kind of reminds you of a template language, but it comes with full power of JavaScript. And JSX also produces React elements, and we'll talk about what elements are uh, shortly as well. All right, next, let's take a look at why do we need JSX? Well, we know that React embraces the fact that rendering logic is inherently coupled with other user interface logic or UI logic. How events are handled, for example, how the state changes over time, and how the data is prepared to be displayed on the site. So instead of like artificially separating technologies by putting markup logic in separate files, what React does, it separates concerns, okay, with loosely coupled units, and these are called components. And I've been talking about components, I've mentioned this word quite a bit. And of course, that's how React separates the concerns with uh, something called components that contain both, for example. So, and of course, I'm going to be explaining components as we move forward so you get more comfortable. Now, also note that React doesn't require using JSX, but most people find it helpful as a visual aid when working with UI inside the JavaScript code. It also allows React to show more useful error and warning messages. So it's just a helpful tool that we use within React. All right, next, let's take a look at how to embed expressions in JSX because it is very, very powerful. So if you see on your screen this example below that we've declared a variable called name and then use it inside JSX by wrapping it in curly braces, right? Well, 
Yeah, that's how you see it. So you can put any, in fact, valid JavaScript expression inside the curly braces within JSX. So you could use like two plus two, or you can use user dot first name, or you can even use format name and then curly braces user. And they're all valid JavaScript expressions. And that's really how you can embed expressions using JSX. All right, next let's take a step further. JSX is also an expression too, by the way. So after compilation, JSX expressions become regular JavaScript expression or function calls and evaluate to JavaScript objects. Now, what that means is that you can use JSX inside of, say, you know, your if statements or for loops. You can assign it to variables. You can accept it as arguments. And of course, you can also return it from functions. And that's really what JSX can do for you when we're working with React. And by the way, you can also specify children with JSX, right? So if a tag is empty, you may close it immediately with the forward slash and then, you know, the closing tag, just like you do uh, with an XML or HTML. And of course, importantly, JSX prevents injection attacks. I'm going to be getting more into that later on, but it's safe to embed user input in JSX. All right, so that's all about fundamentally about JSX. Hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. Super excited. Moving forward. In the previous video, we rendered to the DOM using React, right? It was one small element but using you know, a couple of elements calls was not that big of a deal. But consider if you really want to render an unordered list, right? And it had many items. So for example, you could have to create uh, you know, element for hot dogs, an element for hamburgers, and you know, of course, create element for pizza and so on. That's, so that's a whole lot, right? Depending on the list. So now is a good time to really incorporate JSX. So Java's you know, is, is basically is a language extension of JavaScript that allows you to write tags directly into JavaScript, right? So you can just add a list tag and directly, and then you can list all your items, right? So this looks very, very similar to HTML. And that's really the power, and it's very helpful. So you could add hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza in a list, uh, you know, an ordered list. Or, or sushi, for example. So the browser is not going to render tags automatically in the browser, but because you were using the create wrap, there's a tool that works behind the scene that's called Babel, right? So babel.js.io is where you need to go and take a look at it, right? It allows you to write code that might not work yet in the browser, but it's a new syntax or because it's not supported like JSX. Now, Babel is going to do all of the hard work of compiling the code to format that is compatible with the browser. So basically, you're just going to take all of those tags and turn them into create element calls using Babel, right? So instead of having to write it yourself. So you can, of course, experiment by going to babel.js.io or just take your code, the React DOM, dot render, and then just paste it within Babel's website and you can see the output. That looks very familiar as a bunch of create element calls, right? So if you're wondering what is Babel doing behind the scenes, you can always take a look at the website by pasting your code. So Babel and React work very, very closely. That allows you to use JSX syntax to make your code more readable and easier to write. And that's really what we're seeing here. I hope this helps practice with this. If you have any questions, course post in the discussion area with this let's move to the next lesson welcome back super excited a solid understanding of JSX syntax is important for getting the most out of react and while JSX shares a lot of similarities with HTML there are definitely some differences so let's take a look at some of the cool things you can do with JSX it's a pretty dynamic syntax. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called city, and I'm going to set that equal to a string called Madrid, or you can use any city. Then I'm going to go ahead and replace the unordered list with heading one, and I'm going to say 
hello from let's say the city right so we're going to use this jsx template to now add the name of the city dynamically into the h1 you could do the same thing with an object for example so if you make the city an object with a name and a country for example now you can access those values as you would expect with dot notation so city dot name for example is in city dot country another important thing that you need to understand about jsx is you can add attributes directly to your tags so if you go to public folder with an explorer and open up the index.html for example and what I can do here is let's just go ahead and just add a style tag right so I can do some CSS styling and just by opening and ending style tag within the tag I'm gonna add let's say a heading and I'm gonna use the ID selector and change the color to pink blue green whichever you want right so if you go back to the index file and then go to the heading one tag you can then add the ID to that h1 just like you would do otherwise with an HTML so the ID equals heading and then that style would be applied now if you want to add a class you could also do that so go back to the HTML index.html and then just add that cool dash text right and just give it a family to Monaco or Times New Roman and then of course navigating back to the code you can use the class name and then input cool dash text right so keep that in mind within JSX you need to use the class name so if you want to save this and boom you see it right here so you can in later videos I'm going to show you other techniques as well but this is of course a handful so go ahead and practice with this a bunch of times because you would really understand why we're going back and forth right so I hope this kind of makes sense any questions post in the discussion area and with this let's move to the next lesson welcome back so we have rendered so far react elements within the dom using element calls and element is the most atomic unit in react application so when you're designing react application for real right you start creating user interfaces with collection of react elements called components so a component lets you you know put user interface independent and reusable pieces right it's just a function that returns some ui so i'm going to go ahead and add a function called hello for example and hello is going to return a heading one tag and it's going to say let's say welcome to claydesk or welcome to react so instead of rendering just a simple element we're now going to add hello as just a JSX tag and of course you're going to open it and close it and you're going to see welcome to react rendered right so you may use self-closing JSX tags you can do that also so hello is self-closing make it more readable right but the output is exactly the same so you can also wrap more than one tag with a set of parentheses but that's totally optional you can do a div tag for example you can say welcome to react you can do a paragraph let's build something cool or any other additional paragraph right so with jsx always always components need to be capitalized very important guys right so the hello for example the h needs to be uppercase all right so this is very very important a very common mistake that we do so react components are simply a collection of components you know elements that are used to so to recap by the way react components are collections of react elements that you can use to build user interfaces i hope this helps practice with this if you have any questions post in the discussion area and with this let's move to the next lesson welcome back super excited we're going to talk about and try to understand props or properties within react right so props or properties is an object in react that contains properties about the components so with props you can display dynamic data within a component so let's to begin let's take a quick look at the props object so the first thing i'm going to do is pass props to the hello function and then console.log the props now if you open up the console you're going to see an object and at this point it's an empty object you can add on to this object by adding an attribute to the hello tag on the bottom here 
and say library equals react. And now you can use this value inside of your heading one tag by referencing props.library instead of this JSX template. And you can see it library react has been added to the props object that's been logged to the console. Now, this library property is going to accept dynamic values. It could be any, like next.js, could be view, could be clear.js, could be any of these, right? So, when you look at changing, or let's add another property here. For example, let's say props.message says, let's have some fun with React, or just have fun. Now, that is going to be displayed instead of the paragraph, and you see it added to the console log. Now, one quick thing to note about JSX is currently we're just using strings. So we have react and have fun. But if you want to use a number, you would just have to pass it inside of these JSX curly braces, right? So instead of sending it as a string. So now you can reference this instead of your paragraph. You can say props.number and you can add this to a sentence, right? Like props total. And that will display three props. With JSX, you can also pass functions to these JSX templates. So the first thing I'm going to do is console log the keys from the props object, like library message and number, right? It's going to return an array of keys from the object, from, from the library. And if you want to make this more dynamic, you could also do, instead of passing value three, you could say object.keys props.length. And that's how you're always going to display three props in total, right? That's part of the component. So now it should read three props total. It's also common to see values from the props object being structured for brevity, by the way. So you can do is instead of passing in the entire object, you can reference library message and number, you know, by name. And now you can remove the props dot from each of these properties, right? and you've shortened up the syntax a little bit, it's much cleaner and easier to read exactly the values that are being passed to this function. So to recap, the props object provides data to a component to be displayed, right? Think of a React component as a function that takes in data as an argument and then returns React elements to create a user interface. I hope this kind of makes sense in terms of understanding props or properties within React. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. And with this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. Moving forward, the power of React starts to become more obvious when you start putting components together to create a larger user interface. So the process of composing components is what React is all about. So the first thing you want to do is just going to create a component called app, for example. And then in this app, component should have a div and just have it rendered app, right? Now, next thing you want to be able to do is create another function component called lake, for example. And lake is going to return a heading one and you're going to pass some properties into this lake function and display the lake's name. Now, inside of the app component, right, inside of the div is where you're going to place the lake component. So the lake component is going to have, let's say, the name attribute could be Lake Tahoe, Lake Placid or whatever. And now the app is responsible for rendering the lake. Now, likewise, now that you have the lake component is for use usable, right? So you can pass different properties to each instance of this lake. So you can have another type of lake called Angora Lake. You can have maybe another lake called you know, Mitchell's Lake or whatever it is, right? So if you inspect this element, you're going to see the root div, but then your app div contains three H1s. Now, if you look at the components tab, you'll notice that the app is the parent component for the three lake components, all of which have their own name properties. So finally, you can do some destructuring, of course, for good measure, you can have or remove the props instead of just pass the name property and display in each one. So I hope this kind of makes sense when you're trying to compose components. And that's really, really the power of React when you start to understand and implement these components. Hope this helps. Practice with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back, everybody. So you can think of your React user interfaces as being reflections of the data that you would like to display. 
So let's take a look, closer look and how you can make this happen, right? So first you want to create a list of all these legs. So let's go ahead and adjust your divs and just make a placeholder for now and then just temporary. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new variable called lake list, which will contain um, different lakes, right? So it could be X lake, Y lake, Z lake, and you name it, right? Just just bunch of lake names. That's what the list contains. So with this lake list array created, now you like to pass that to your app component below, right? And then of course you can replace the div with an unordered list. And you want to be able to display all those lakes in individual list items. Now, you could, of course, hard code everything, but that's not good practice, right? But list might change. So you want to be able to pass those using props or properties, right? So let's go ahead and do props.lakes. Of course, inside this JS expression, right? So you can then map over. So in other words, for each one of these lakes, you want to be able to return a list item and then also display the value of that array item. So we'll just use lake, for example, right? So once you execute this code, you'll see the whole list of all these lakes being displayed, right? So if you just do inspect element, for example, and within the div, you'll see the unordered list. And then of course, all these lakes are displayed, right? And of course, the final step is to destructure this. So you can go ahead and pass in lakes to your app component and get rid of the uh, props, for example and that will help make the code easier, right? So you can make or use the map function to build a list of lakes, however many there are dynamically. And that's really the power of React being able to rendering lists. I hope this helps practice with this short lesson. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. So moving forward, let's now take a look at rendering lists of objects. So in the previous video, we looked at how dynamic data can be used to populate items in the list. What if you wanted to render items from the list of objects, right? So it's a similar approach. So let's go ahead and consider a data like list of lakes, right? So you'll have ID one, name, echo, trailhead, and so on. So just names of ID two, ID three, and so on. So based on the lake list, so once you save all of the lake list data has changed a little bit and of course you'll probably see this error right and you need to change make some changes to your app right so let's go ahead and create a div under the function app and then within the div we're going to use the jsx expressions we're going to map over our lakes so instead of creating an unordered list this time we are going to go ahead and create a div a container and inside that div container we should display the name of the lake, right? And that could be a heading one, heading two, for example. In this instance, we're using heading two, lake.name. So, and then you can go ahead and add a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs, depending on the description of the lakes and how you want to access the lakes and so on, right? So, now we take a look at the elements with all these divs and h2s, we're passing lakes as a property again. So if you go to components, you look at the console there's a warning here about each child in a list should have a unique key so i'm going to talk about this warning in the next lecture or two right but for right now this is how you would actually end up rendering lists of object right so that's rendering item from a list of objects go ahead practice with this if you have any questions post in the discussion area with this let's move to the next lesson Welcome back. So in the last lesson, we did get a warning message and I wanted to show you. So let's jump right in and see what the warning message was and how do we fix it and uh, whether it's, it's something to worry about or not. So I'm going to go ahead and of course, uh, even though our React app from our last lesson is working perfectly fine, but if I go to inspect element, you'll notice there's a warning that each child in a list should have a unique key property right so this is where it's just a warning but it can be solved and of course as always what we need to do is we need to specify a key 
and a unique key kind of tells React to keep track of all of these lists and arrays, right? So that's a jump. There are a couple of ways you can do it. First, of course, you can click on the link that it provides you, which is a good thing because it takes you to the documentation help page, which is nice. I'm going to show you that too. And then, of course, I'll also demonstrate how to fix it. So keys, by the way, help React identify which items have changed, are added, or are removed. So keys should be given to the elements inside the array to give the elements a stable identity. For example, it gives you an example right here. So you have a bunch of numbers in a variable, one, two, three, four, five. And then of course, here's the key, right? So it's just a list that you need to specify key is equal number, or you can use the two string method, or you can specify the ways, a couple of ways you can do so, right? So the best way to pick a key is to use a string that uniquely identifies a list among its siblings. Most often, you would use IDs from your data as keys. So let's jump right in and take a look at what and how we can fix this, right? So we just looked at how to render items from a list dynamically, right? Using the map function. Now, when we did this, we got this warning that each child in a list must have a unique key property, and that's what we're going to solve here, right? So, ever, if you ever see a warning, by the way, there are links that takes you there, and this is where the documentation is, how to fix it. But it's much easier to do it just hands-on. Since I'm already here, I'll show you how to fix it anyways, right? So, what we need to do is add a key which allows react to keep track of which items have been added or removed right so it's just like an identifier right for a dynamically created element so i'm going to go ahead and add a key to the div here and i'm going to give it a key here for example i'm going to say div key right so let's go ahead and identify right under the lakes.map I'm going to go ahead and say div key and I can identify this with for example the leg ID right so this is going to be equals to leg dot ID so what I'm doing here is I'm just associating an ID and once that's done you'll notice that a couple of ways other ways you can also do it you can also add a key for a list of numbers also, right? So let's go ahead and first save this and then take a look at our React app. And there you go, right? So the error has been removed. You don't have to worry about the errors coming in again. Perfect. So all you need to do is just add a div key. Now there are a couple other ways like the two string method, but that's your homework. So you can navigate to the link that's provided if you do get a warning and then use the two string method as well okay but simple as that associate an id and it should be taken care of so if i go back to inspect element you'll notice there are no more warnings provided hope this helps practice with this and of course your homework is to use the two string method all right okay any questions post in the discussion area with this let's move to the next lesson Welcome back. So moving forward, we are now going to take a look at the conditional statements, right? For example, the if and the if else, and how do we use that within React? So there are times when you may want to conditionally render components based on the values of properties. Maybe you want to render a component only when the user is logged in, for example, or in certain season, right? So I'm going to demonstrate the seasonal aspect, right? So if you're visiting, let's say, a mountain resort, for example, or a lake, you want to go skiing, right? And if you're visiting during the summer, you want to go to the lake. So let's go ahead and start by creating a couple of components. So I'm going to create a lake component that's just a function lake that returns a div with a heading one. And I'm just going to write visit some lake, right? Also create a function called ski resort. And this is going to look very, very similar, but I'm going to display mountain information, right? Same thing within a div tag, I'm going to do H1. And then of course, the name of the mountain resort. Now the third function app that also is going to be created, I'm going to pass some properties, there are the props, right? And of course, within the DOM, 
I'm going to add the season equals summer, right? And if that's where the inside of this app components, I'm going to say if prop season equals summer, then return lake, right? Otherwise, just simply display the ski resort component. Pretty straightforward logic, right? So when the season is set to summer, we are going to you know display that lake. And if I change it to winter, you are going to say, you know, that mountain resort. You also notice that you know display anything else besides summer is just going to display the ski resort. So you can be a little pickier. If you say props.season equals winter, for example, then it will return the ski resort component. All right, perfect. So in the summer and winter, it will display the correct component. Anything else will not. Now the app component is rendering either the lake or the ski resort component. And what you want to do is instead of just hard coding these values, of course, right, the component itself, you would like to pass via the properties, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add a name to the lake component and add a name to the ski resort component. And then, of course, you want to display those inside of the appropriate components. And that's straightforward so far. So if you refresh right now, it's working as expected. Perfect. Yes, it is. All right. Let's take this step further. So you're going to use the common syntax that you're going to see in React applications, which is to use a ternary if statement, for example, to display all these components. So this is an optional syntax, by the way. You don't have to use this, but I definitely want to show you so that you know that this is possible. And before the question mark is the condition. And after the question mark is the component that you want to render if that condition is true. Otherwise, you can simply display the ski resort component. And of course, you can also clean this up a little bit and make your code nicer. If the season is summer, for example, display the lake. Otherwise, just check to see whether the season is winter. If the season is winter, display the ski resort name. And of course, as a final check, you can display something like say come back in the winter of summers if the two values are not provided right so again this is just optional but i want you to know so you can actually see it if you see it you know exactly what it is right so but certainly you can still use just the if statements that's fine and that's perfectly works well as well so practice with it because if conditions are fairly fairly common and you will encounter all of these concepts as you develop applications within React. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area with this. Let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. Let's take a look at React fragments and see what that's all about, right? So in the previous lecture, we conditionally rendered a component lake or ski resort depending on what season it was. But let's say you wanted to re render two components at once. In other words, we wanted an app component to return the lake, for example, and the ski resort component. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all the properties so that it's much cleaner. So we start from scratch, right? So for the lake, I'm just going to return the H1. That's going to say lake. And the ski resort should just say ski resort, right? So I'm going to get rid of all of these properties in the ski resort and the lake component and even in the app component so get rid of all the properties so with our cleanup complete let's render it and you'll probably get an error and this is a parsing error jsx elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag right so this is where the fragments come into play right so we wrap the sibling components within a div right? but if you take a look at the elements you see a lot of divs right okay so of course that means clutter and we don't like that clutter right so the new feature of the react is react fragments so react fragments are intended to be used to deal with this particular issue with json components right but if you use a fragment you're not wrapping it in any extra tag by the way you can use react.fragment or you can just use fragment shorthand which is even simpler and cleaner and you just open and close a tag and just looks like an empty tag. So let's try to render both of these at the top levels. So we'll render these at the root level after commenting out our app and it's going to work the same way, by the way. I'm going to show you both ways, right? So both, let's render both the lake and the ski resort. 
without having to wrap them into an extra tag. And that's really the power of React Fragments. So I hope this kind of makes sense and helps, right? So practice with it. Let me know if you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. So before we dig into managing state with React, let's take a look at talk and talk about the restructuring, right? So we, we use the object restructuring with props object. This allows you to reference keys from an object instead of having to use props and then dot notations every single time. So with this type of restructuring, you can access these values by key. Instead, we can access by index or position. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an array of snacks, for example. And I'm gonna have a list here, popcorn, pretzels, or whatever you, know, you can put in, right? You can access these values via the index, like you can use snacks, bracket zero, which is the first one, which is the first item in the array. If you like to see the second and third items and just use one and two, straightforward array concept. But let's say you like to be able to achieve the same thing, but you want to be able to use array destructuring, right? So first let's set up our array brackets and then you're going to go ahead and give the first item a name. So you can call it first, maybe, right? Perfect. And then you can console log you are going to see the first item in the array. Now this array destructuring is going to take in these values like first, second, and third, right? So you can use the second value and the second in the array. And then of course you do the same thing with third. And this is the way of assigning a name to one of these values instead of accessing the other index. And you can call these whatever you like, like just first, second, third, or you can call it anything you like, right? So also let's say you want to be able to grab the last item in the array or the third item in the array what you could do is only give the first two items a name you can use these commas as placeholders and just use the third you know variable for example you could say fruit for example and you can just console log and you can say hey this is pineapple right that's the third in the list so it's important to understand how the array um, you know destruction works because when you use build your react applications you're going to be using them over and over again I hope this helps. Practice with it. Let me know if you have any questions. Post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back, everybody. So, as we've seen in our application so far, if there's any sort of change, React components will re-render. So this could be a change in properties or it could be a change in state. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about more about how to incorporate state values in the application. So the first thing you'd like to be able to do is, of course, let's clean up all of this code that we have, like the lake component and the ski resort component. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify the app component and just put maybe a render a status here. And we can also go ahead and clean up the, you know, the app, the React DOM and so on. So the application is going to display a status. Status is going to be a state value that reflects the current status for this application. So the first thing you need to do is just add state to your application. It's to incorporate the use state hook from the React library. So a hook is a function that allows you to add functionality to a component. And React has a number of built-in hooks to handle common use cases like this one. So the first thing you're going to be able to do is create a constant here and then use a array destructuring it's like the status and use state and what you need to pass is the initial state for the application which is open so when your app component loads you want to be able to have the status be open so now within the context of heading one you can display the status the initial status is open of course now use state returns a pair here right so a status is the state value that you've given a name. Remember, the array destructuring is letting us give this value a name. And the second value is being returned from use state is, is a function to update the state. So I'm going to say set status, for example. And now I'm just going to add a bunch of buttons here, right, to open, close, and so on. So every time you click that button, you're going to change the status to say closed instead of that button. And on click event, you're going to call that event or the set status function and pass it a value that you want to change it to. 
So every time you click close, that's going to change the status for the app. Let's add, go ahead and add another button. So let's set the status to say open and now pass the new state value, which is open. And you can close the status and you can open it, right? So boom, you'll have two buttons. So let's go ahead and add another status, maybe another button, maybe say back in five minutes or maybe you're on a break or something, right? So when you click on break, it says back in five will be displayed. So just to recap, a hook is a function that allows you to add some functionality to the component and then use state is a built-in hook that you can use to handle state changes in the application. So remember that the first value that is returned from the use state function inside of this array destructuring is the state value. And then the second value is a function that you can use to change the state value. So if you're handling any sort of state inside of your application, use state is a powerful utility that you can use to make that work, right? And as you move forward, you're gonna be using more of these hooks. And these are very, very powerful um, elements within React. I hope this helps. Practice with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. So, in the previous lecture, we looked at how we can change state in an application using the use state hook. But it's also possible to have multiple different state values in the same component. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and add another constant here called manager, for example. And then I'm going to use set manager also. And I'm going to create this function called set manager to change the state of the manager and then supply an initial state. So when this app loads, for example, Alex or John or whatever name you want to use, you know, will be will be there, right? So let's go ahead and add another div. And this is going to display the heading one tag, like manager on duty. And then of course, and also make sure that you remember not to render a JSX element, right? So we're gonna wrap that in a fragment. So both of these values now are listed and you have your status and you have your manager. So the next thing you wanna use, is just create a button called new manager just to change the state right so instead of uh, or you just use the button that says on click button so every time you click the button it's gonna give a new manager so just click use an on click handler on this button is gonna call the set manager function right so we'll just use this arrow function called set manager and then let's go ahead and of course you know click on new manager here and it will replace the initial state which was Alex or John, whatever name you use, right? With the newer name. So you can also add another state value for year, for example, and of course add a div that is going to display a year. So for the year 2050, for example, React is built to last, right? And you can add the second value set year and similarly just create a button on click event. So every time you click on this button in the new div, you're gonna add you know, take the year and add one to it, right? And of course, add a label to the button that says new year. Every time you click the button, it's gonna increment that state value. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to overwrite the value of your state. You could perform calculations as well using the set function, right? So this is pretty powerful and you can see that we add hooks and of course using multiple state variables is also useful. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Now let's take a look at how we can work with the use effect hook, right, within React. So let's adjust the app component and we're going to create a checkbox component, all right? So I'm gonna clear everything up, render a checkbox, and then inside of your checkbox component, we are going to return a checkbox. So let's use the input type function, right? Equal checkbox, and that's just a fragment. And inside of this fragment, we are going to use, add an input. And if we want to be able to, you know, have the checkbox handle state, use check as state variable, and then set check will be the function that changes that state. Then you can use, of course, the state value to be the value of that input. 
that's up to you. So the next thing what you like to do is just add a JSX expression and you want to be able to display some text to see if the box is checked or not checked, right? So when you load, it's not checked and you'll see that. If you change it to true, you'll see it checked, right? We also want to be able to use set checked instead of an on change input, right? So every time you change the state of the checkbox, you're going to call the set check function. Now that set check function is going to take in a little toggle here. So whatever the value of the checked is, is going to return the opposite. Okay. So let's say you want to look at the value of check. So you could place an alert before the return and you can see the alert appear that kind of tells you whether it's false or true. So this functionality has nothing to do with the component itself, has nothing to do with the DOM. So typically what you'll do is use another one of these hooks called the use effect, right? And that's what I'm talking about here. The use effect is going to take in a function and the function is going to return the alert and use effect is going to allow us to perform side effects right inside of the function component. So you'll see that once you have this use effect, you'll see the alert and that's going to be the check box, right? So things that you really want the component to do other than return the UI are called effects, right? So an alert, a console log, any sort of interaction with the browser or native API is not part of the render. It's not part of the return. So we can use the use effect hooks to all sorts of cool things in your application to make them more interactive and of course all sorts of add additional functionality. Hope this helps. Practice with it. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. Let's now take a look at the use effect dependency array. So it is designed to work in conjunction with other stateful hooks like use state, for example, and use reducer. I'm going to talk about that later. So React will re-render the component true whenever the state changes. And as we've learned, the use effect will be called after these renders. So in this lesson, I want to dig more specifics deeper into the use effect dependency, right? So let's go ahead and create the app component. I'm going to go ahead and return these inputs. This time, this is going to be a text input. So I'm going to wrap this up within a label around it and put favorite phrase, right? Similarly, just copy and paste, add another phrase, your second favorite phrase. So of course, I'm going to put a line break so that it's easier to see it on the screen. Perfect. So now I'm going to go, go ahead and set up a state variable for the value of the first input. So I'm going to say constant val comma and then set the value and then to set value to use state, right? To update the state. So we need another one, of course, for value two for the other input field. So val two, set val two equals use state, initial state will be an empty string. Then you need to tie these state values to the input, right? Right under the favorite phrase for the first phrase, the favorite phrase and the second favorite phrase, right? Then you're going to add on change. So every time you make a change to this input, right? Every time you type into it, you're going to collect the value and then be able to use that same thing for the second, right? For value two. So now that you have the US set up, we're going to add use effect, which is going to console log the value of, or the current value of each one of these fields. So we'll say use effect, we'll say console.log, and then the field one, whatever the value of that field one is. Same thing, if you look into the, as you type into this field, you're gonna see each one of these letters display within the console log, right? So notice that the use effect is being called. We know it's being called because we see it in the console log. So let's go ahead and create for field two, same thing, use effect, right? So val2, you're going to be able to see it on the console as well. So whether it's the favorite phrase, that's the first field, the use effect for both field and field2 are being called. So it's kind of not something that we really want, right? We want for each one of these fields, we want only want one use effects to fire, right? If that state value is being updated. 
So this is where the dependency array comes into play. All right. So the second argument that is sent to use effect is called the dependency array. In that array, we will use the state variable that you want to listen for changes in. In other words, for this first use effect, you only want that function, the use effect, effect function to fire when you're making changes to that value, the first value. You could also do the same with the second field. So you're going to add val2 to the dependency array also. Now, if you type into the first field, the favorite phrase, you're only going to see those updates, right? Nothing about the second favorite phrase or field two. You could also to listen for both. So if you just wanted to call use effect each time, val and val2 change, just add, you know, pass both values in. So dependency arrays are really important part of working with React hooks. It's going to allow for smart rendering so that you don't have to trigger unnecessary re-rendering if you pass the right values to that array. Hope this helps. Very important. Practice a couple of times with this. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area with this. Let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. Moving forward, we are going to take a look at how to fetch data with the use effect hook. Very, very powerful. And in this lesson moving forward, we are going to be fetching data from a GitHub user, which of course I'm going to use it as my own GitHub account. And if you have your own, you can use the same as well. So now it's important. Another way that you can actually use the use effect, like I said, is to fetch some data, right? So so to demonstrate, let's take a look at the GitHub API. So if you visit the api.github.com, for example, and forward slash users, and you can just add, you know, any GitHub username account, right? So you're going to see some data as JSON. Now, what we want to do is incorporate the data into your own app to build a GitHub user component. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of everything, of course, in the app component. So clean up our code. And of course, we'll still use the app component and we will use the function called GitHub user. So the purpose of the GitHub user is to fetch some data from the GitHub API and then display it. So the app is going to basically return the GitHub user and then we're going to pass it as a property of the login of the GitHub user you want to be able to find. And then you can use destructuring, of course, add the login to the function. So the first thing you want to do is use the data and then set data and then use the state variable, right? Use state and then the function to change the data to be called is called set data. Now inside of this GitHub user component, you're going to use the use effect, right? The use effect is going to fetch from this particular URL, right? The api.github.com. And you can then of course fetch data and concatenate and just you know type the URL that you're looking for. So anytime you want to change that, you can. And of course, feel free to fetch your own data. And then we're going to chain on the event function. And then we're going to take the response from the API and we're going to turn it into JSON. And then we are going to call the set data function that is going to call that function with the new value of data. So now if you have some data, you're going to return a div and this div is going to contain just a little JSX template. It's a little blob of stringified data, right? That's all that there is to it. And then the function needs to return. If you don't have a user, just return null. Okay, as soon as you do that, you're going to see the stringified JSON data. How cool is that in your browser? So you've successfully made the fetch request using use effect. And then, of course, you've been able to stringify the data as well. All right, so now instead of the div, you can go take a step further. You can do a heading one, for example. You can display just the data.login, for example. So it'll just display the user login in heading one. You can also use the source like data.avatar URL. So if you have a picture, it'll display the picture as well. And you can, of course, set up the width and height depending on your own requirement, right? So, of course, it accepts dynamic data. So if you want to pass different login, you can use different fetch requests for other users. And you can display other users as needed. So fetching data with React, there's several different ways of doing so. But this is a common pattern you'll see when you're starting to build your components. Very powerful. Hope this helps. Go ahead and practice with it. 
fetch your own GitHub user data. If you don't have a GitHub account, yeah, you gotta have one GitHub account for yourself. And then if you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With that, let's move to the next lesson. Welcome back. So once you're done with your app, you wanna be able to build it, right? So you can publish it onto your hosting provider. And that could be anything that could be, whether it's AWS, Azure, or even WordPress or any public hosting provider. So what you need to do is, of course, before I demonstrate the command, if you look and go to package.json file, and this file already has all the scripts, right, that you need. So all you need to do is just be able to run the command, and this is going to go ahead and build the entire project for you. Not only that, it's gonna create a build project here within Explorer, which contains all the files that you can actually take and then use them onto a public hosting provider. All right, perfect. So let's jump right in. Let me go ahead and open the terminal up. And the command for uh, this is fairly straightforward. So what you need to do is just say npm run build. And this is going to package everything up and of course create a build folder and then of course optimizing for production build. And you'll notice on the left explorer the build folder has already been made and it's going to create and of course package everything up. Once it's done you can then run the npm install dash g serve command so that it creates the URL for you as well. And there are many, many other ways you can do Netlify, for example, or you can use Amazon. You can take these files and you know throw them into the S3 bucket on AWS and depending on where you want to host. So that's all there is to it. So if I open up the build, you'll notice all of these files are part of the build as well. So if you have any questions, post in the discussion area as a homework, go ahead. Once you finish up your app, you can go ahead and then of course build it up and follow a couple of additional commands. And then if you have any questions, post in the discussion area. With this, let's move to the next lesson.